luck is coming my way Wherever I go, hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way <laughs> I have a very booming voice, and not oh, everybody good. else does. So. Well, that's good. No, no. You, you, what we will do, we will project. Yes. Okay. Project. We will project out. <clears throat> Thank God there's not a ton of people around here. All right. So let's see here, and it's always just as it goes. Mm -hmm. But John Masari. It's John Masari, the composer. The composer of Killer Clowns from Outer Space of the music. Killer yes, and it's you know it's, I. I, I I will be honored when that shows up as an 80s trivia question. Okay. On what was that? Trivia Pursuits. Trivia Pursuits. Do pursuit. people even play that anymore? They have a dark, spooky trivia pursuit called Goth. That makes sense. I could see it on there. That makes like sense. Like Goth Part 2. That makes sense. How are we looking good? All right. <clears throat> Hello again. Grim Life Collective sitting with the composer of the music for Killer Clowns from Outer Space, John Massari. It's a pleasure to meet you, it's man. It's a pleasure to meet you, brother. This has been like a killer Halloween because, quite yes. honestly, mm -hmm. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is in the theme parks. Mm -hmm. We met the Kyoto Brothers. The other day we met Suzanne Snyder. And now we get to meet you. Yes. So it's like coming full circle. Yes, we're all, we're all, it's, it's like, it's like the, the, the birds have come to roost, so to speak. Right. You know, you, you have uh, Halloween Horror Nights it has been so... The creative teams at both um, Orlando and Hollywood, uh, John Murdy in Hollywood and Michael Aiello out here, have been so instrumental in not only reviving the brand, but elevating it and bringing it to the public. I mean, for crying out loud, I was there yesterday. There had to be at least 2,000 people in line. Oh. To wait, you know, when you think of this, think of this for a second. 2,000 people are waiting an hour and a half which is the length of a movie, right. if you were going to a movie theater, to see a, uh, uh, a haunted house that the experience lasts probably like six to eight minutes. Maybe around there, give or take, wouldn't you say? I would say that, yeah. And why do you think it is even here? Who, what, what powers that be brought it here? Well, I have the answer, I can just tell you. The Go fan, ahead. The fans, right? the right. fans demanded that there, that, can you do something with Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Because we love it. Now, can you this imagine? This is the second year. This is the second year, right? <laughs> That's great. The fan, the love of the fans. I've always said Killer Clowns from Outer Space was born out of love, and what keeps it going is love. So the love of the fans is what brought it to Universal Studios, Orlando, and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Both will admit, because we, we, you know, on on our social media, they cut. Keep, the fans keep asking, when are you going to have a Killer Clowns house? When are you going to have a Killer Clowns house? And they gave it to them. So can you imagine that power directed toward the IP holder, MGM? We, we want a part two. We want a movie. <laughs> we want a movie. Can Killer it's Clowns It's been too. a while. And if there's 2,000 people waiting in line for an eight-minute experience, I'm sure there's going to... Uh, and that's at any given time mm -hmm. in one night. Right. Right. So... I think you can crunch the numbers and figure out that, I think you can get people to come to a theater and sit down for an hour and a half for another recreation by the Kyoto Brothers and another music score by... I know we would be yours there. Yours truly. Yeah. We would be there like opening night. We would probably go dressed as clowns too. Just saying. That's okay. I'd go as dressed as a clown. That, that's, I, I mean, I, I want to see that by the way. <laughs> when you do that, I, I need well-lit, clear photographs. Speaking of, uh -huh. on I noticed on your social media, because you've been here for a couple days now, Yes. you were at Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the house at Universal Orlando, yes. you, took a, you mentioned something about Shorty. Is he your favorite clown? Shorty? Uh, well, one of your favorites? Shorty is my favorite because I, I, I can identify him with him because most fans have reached out to me and said, we love Shorty, and they have very specific reasons. Because Shorty is like, well, he's short, he's different. He's not understood, and he gets picked on. <laughs> and but when he, but he, even though even though he's being picked on, made fun of, he stands up for himself. That's very important. It is. I think people have tuned into that, and people have told me I love dressing as Shorty because I identify with Shorty. We've seen a lot of people, especially with the the merchandise that's out in the parks mm -hmm. right now, like going gaga goo goo over mm -hmm. Shorty like keychains and buttons. Right. So, I can definitely see that. Yeah. And um, the other aspect, uh, now I have a 
secret fan theory about Shorty. I think Shorty is a, uh, I think the gender of Shorty is not a boy. Okay. I think Shorty can be a girl, a, gir a girl clown. The shortest of all the clowns. And I, I you know, I want to say, you know, in my own killer clown fantasy stories, which is not in the, not in the uh, canon. Right. Is that she inspired the expedition to Earth because she may be the smallest of all the clowns, but she has the biggest dreams. And probably the biggest appetite. <laughs> well, all the clowns, they all look different in different shapes and sizes. Yeah. You know, it's almost like that there's different Isn't that wonderful types. that they didn't make one generic looking clown for everyone? Right. Kyoto, see, that's the genius of the Kyoto Brothers. Like every, per, every, I mean, we all have eyes, nose, and ears, and facial symmetry and what have you, but we all look different, and that's what they brought to clowns. Each one of them has a very specific personality, a look, even a, even a specific walk. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see the behind the scenes of uh, the making of Killer Clowns, uh, because the, the Killer Brothers, in addition, in addition to being artists, visual artists and special effects people, they're also puppeteers. And they directed the actors to walk with certain gestures, you know, like pretend you're jello, or pretend like you're walking underwater, you know, to get the actors so that each clown has a, a different gait, you know. We just found out recently, and I can't believe I didn't know this, but when we met Suzanne Snyder, she said that Steven was actually Clownzilla. Like in the scene when he comes out. Oh, actually, down. it was Charlie. Charlie. Char okay, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I did not know that. Because and then they were I'm watching gonna... it, it's like you can see it coming down. You're like, oh, I know. Yeah, and you, <laughs> and uh, they were. If I'm, if the story is, um, if I'm recalling the story correctly, <clears throat> they were going to do the Clownzilla with stop motion animation, but it was just going to take months and months to do that scene. And um, you know. I, I'm very good friends with the sound designer, uh, Chuck Serino, who's also a filmmaker and composer. And when we did the, uh, uh, the concert, I went in and we brought in all the sound effects that did not get mixed in to the original mix, because we were kind of low on the totem pole as far as priorities when, with, the, with the studio we were with at the time. So some of the tracks didn't get put in. So there's tracks where, like, Clownzilla is just like pounding on that truck, right? And you can hear the clang, clang, crushing metal, <clears throat> which is sounds great. And uh, the audience really responded to that last year. So, so I also wanted to ask you, <clears throat> and this falls into this interview. We do a thing called the Grim Interview. Yes, the Grim Interview, because it's Grim Life Collective. It's a play on words. Right. So one question, and we mm -hmm. keep it simple. Okay. In all of your time working with killer clowns from outer space, right. do you have anything that stands out more than anything? Like if you can just pick something. It might be hard, I don't know. No, you're talking about when I was actually working on it. Yeah, when you were working not, on not, it. Not now recollecting. Correct. Uh, okay, not now like the permutations of memories and all that. Right. Okay, um, gosh, there's several. <laughs> I mean, we. Were, I, the first day of recording was on Halloween. It was That's on a cool. Friday. That when I booked the studio, for some reason, the first open date was on Friday, and we were, I had it booked out for six weeks. And uh, the first day they had available was Halloween, and I said, "How perfect is that?" Right? Halloween. And right for, after the first day of recording, I went to a Halloween party in Hollywood. Do you remember what you were for Halloween that year? Did you dress uh, up? I had to ask. Dad doesn't wear <laughs> costumes. I said that even before I was a dad. Dad doesn't wear costumes. Uh, I, I wasn't. I was just dressed. Okay. Uh, you know, I didn't dress as anything. I've been to a few costume parties. I have gone begrudgingly. It's like we don't do costumes either here at the Grim Life. Every day is a costume. Every day well, is Halloween. Know, look for at us. it. You got such great body well, yeah, why, why do you need that? You know, you got the great <laughs> T-shirt. That's now. This is from a. Um, a British outfit. Yeah, Popcorn yeah. Clothing Popcorn UK. Popcorn Clothing, yeah. Yeah, good group of awesome, people. Awesome people. They make amazing shirts. <clears throat> this is one of the new Halloween ones, specifically for Killer Clowns. Uh, yeah, and I, I have a picture of myself in, in Hollywood with that on. Yes, you in, On my social media. So, back to this. Okay, I will go to the first time I laid eyes on 
the movie okay. before I did the music score. We had, um, at Warner Brothers Studio, they rented out a screening room. And in that screening room was about, oh, like, I'd say 50 or more composers. No, there are 50 people. Half of them were composers. The other one were, others were probably friends of the composers or so, what have you. I went by myself. I happened to sit right next to, unbeknownst to me, sitting right next to Steve Kyoto. And uh, as we were watching the film, you know, I figured he was just a, another guy that was there. I was in, you know, Clowns really scared the shit out of me. You said that? Yeah, and, he's just, <laughs> and he says in that perfect Bronx accent, yeah, me too, you know. And um, so, um, but I gotta say, my first impression, it was actually more terrifying to watch with minimal sound effects and no music. By the way, there's no music. I don't even think they have the Dickie song up there yet. Okay. Uh, I think I heard that later. And um, <clears throat> there was no sound effects, and it would just be a quiet scene. And all of a sudden, you see the, you know, the guy come. The the the. Uh, I think his name is Killer. Uh, now his name is Killer. The one with the the big mallet. Right. With the kid. That was actually more scary. Much more scary without music. It was silent. But. Here is the defining thought that I have, that I think this is what you're going for. Um, a few years previous to that, I had seen Richard Elfman's, who's a filmmaker, mm -hmm. Danny Elfman's slightly older brother. Forbidden Zone? Forbidden Zone. I had seen Forbidden Zone at a, at a film festival, and I said, oh my God, if I can do a movie anywhere close to this, where no one really understands it, but you want to see it again, and it's so bizarre, I, I just have to, I don't know what that's gonna be. Right. And then when I saw Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I go, this is it. This is my film that's gonna define me. I mean, this is like so bizarre. No one, no one has seen anything like this. And I'm looking up at the screen, thinking this. I said, I, I just have to do this movie. I just, it, somehow I it programmed myself. I have to do everything in my power to create something that's gonna say, yeah, that music, that music has to work. So I picked a particular scene. Okay, so that's it. So it was like, it was like that with my epiphany. Right. It, it was so unique, so creative, so original, that's, that I had, it had to be me. It had to be part of my life. See, that's cool. So that's, that's the, the one, I think that's what you're, that's that. if I had to boil it all down, like pin it down to like concentrate it, uh, to its pure essence, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like this, but um, <laughs> I would say that's that's it. That, I think it, you, it. you hit it net right on the yeah the nail there. And I went through the movie, and I picked that. And this is what I do when I audition for movies. I pick a scene that has a variety of transitions, not just a scene like any scene. It has to be a scene that uh, a number of things are happening that's gonna set the movie off. Right. And that was when, um, inside the spaceship, when when Mike and Debbie get discovered that they're in there, they're, they're trespassing, and they have to escape. And then the clowns uh, uh, assemble and descend upon the city. Okay. Or the town <clears throat> of Crescent Cove. <clears throat> so, that was that's where I was able to do some very interesting uh, chase music and um, lots of different textures, lots of different changes within that piece of music. Then we start on the march, and I've always wanted to do that march. And the march was a piece of music I did years earlier with my high school rock band Crisis. I brought that like motif that don 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 don. And they go, oh, I guess that's okay. What chord is that? And I go, well, spell it out. It's going to have an F major 7 chord. And they just like blurted out to me, that's a jazz chord, John. We don't do jazz. We do hard rock. I remember reading Why something about that. Why are you trying to get it convinced us to do jazz? We're going to get thrown out. We're going to play a prom and they're going to throw us out. You know? And it's yeah. like, so when I saw the movie, I said, I have my theme. That's my theme. Like, oh God! And that's so. the the sound that we all, all come to know and right, love. Right, right. It's it's so it's kind of disjointed, you know, and awkward and fun. And at the time, I was listening to a lot of Frank Zappa, Beastie Boys, um, uh, Van Halen, um, 
and obviously a generation before that was was Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. So, and and at the, while at the same time listening to classical music like Dmitri Shostakovich and uh, Prokofiev and um, and um, <clears throat> um, St uh, Karl Stockhausen, um, you know, and all those things played into played into the score, and that's you know those mm -hmm. are the influences basically. So um, it was it was wonderful to get the call from Steve Kiero. He says, "John, you're the composer for the film." Now the march was you that did. like your, you said the audition? Was that like your audition? That was piece? part of the audition. That's cool. So all that all the time from when they get they run out. If you're, for those of you who are familiar, they run out of the spaceship, they escape, and the clowns like they they run over the clowns, but yet the clowns pop back to life and they march upon Crescent Cove mm -hmm. with that theme, that's what was my demo. I still remember the cl one clown turning and facing the camera. Oh yeah, like, so creepy. <laughs> you do that sometimes, Jessica, when we're filming. She's like, come on! <laughs> it's like, oh man. And some of, the, some of the, I wish there was more clown language because there's like some, uh, you know, where the uh, the clown see the, sees the girls go into the, um, into the drugstore and he goes, hmm, Bodo. And then there's another one where it goes, uh, um, home buddy. So, I don't, they I just don't remember these, that, yeah. They just made up these words. And if you can listen just to the dialogue track, uh, there's other little um, clown vocalizations that are really cool. You know, that movie terrif made me terrified to go take out the trash. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, because the guy gets... <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, everybody hates taking you know, out the trash when they're growing you know, every, up. Every trash can has, like, clown, you know, tiny clown popcorn things that will eat you up. It's just, you know. Right? It's just, it's just the way it is. I guess I can say <clears throat> Killer Clowns kind of made me the person I am today. Seriously? Yeah, I loved okay. that movie growing up. And like yeah. this Killer Clowns and meeting the people that have created it, like yourself right. and Suzanne, mm -hmm. it's been like a childhood dream. No, like it's cool. I'm curious as to what your story is. Oh man, with Killer Clowns, like for instance, did you, did your parents forbid you from seeing mm -hmm. it or? No. So okay. my my family, uh, w there used to be this small dinky rental video rental place in, okay. in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania called West Coast Video, mm -hmm. and my mom she would take me and my sister and let us loose inside this place. And my sister, I remember she would pick up things like the secret garden and all this other crap. Well, I shouldn't say that. But I was always drawn to the artwork of the VHS boxes. Oh, really? And I remember seeing uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm -hmm. and the first, first movie I ever saw horror film was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And okay. I, that scared the crap out of me. Do you think? Do you think <laughs> this is a good opportunity for confessions? Sure. Okay. I have not seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've only seen like like partial reviews about it, but it's one of those classics I haven't seen. I haven't seen. There's a few Martin Scorsese see, movies I haven't seen until just recently. Like just I just saw Mean Streets. So please forgive me. I, it's, it's on my list of to watch. I will watch. The first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yes. because like that like started it. That it, was like the original deal. Like you can watch it in like 4K. Like I hope you whatever. don't mind me getting too close to you. No. Okay, there but you, go. you gotta watch the but grittiness I'm just of it. For forgiveness. Okay, you gotta watch the grittiness of it. The, oh yeah, and try to find like an old VHS copy and, and sit at home in a closet and just be like. And when you imagine, can you imagine <laughs> when they were making that film? Everyone was like, okay, this Toby Hooper Hooper guy, right? Toby mm -hmm. Hooper, right? Are you scaring me? And we're making a movie. Are we going to get paid for this, by the way? Or are we going to actually finish this? Or and it became a big thing. Like oh, years yeah. ago, we went. Um, well, that kind of kicked everything off. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, there had, I mean, if you go back into classic horror, I mean, there are some horror films. They did some pretty gross things, even 20, 30 years prior to that. I couldn't give you titles, but there are titles where like people are getting like their eye sliced open and stuff like and, that. And I can't remember in black and white, which is even scarier. As brutal and gruesome as Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, I don't think there's any blood in it. I think people like made a big deal about that. Oh, that because I have to it check was out. like there was like not a single drop of blood that can be seen. Oh I mean aside from like I mean there's like like but Ed not, Neil cuts his hand. Because in stuff. real life, I mean, yeah, it's something like, like that. People are like water balloons; they'll just start gushing. Sadly right? enough, yeah, yeah. Don't play with sharp objects. 
please. So before we go, yes. I have to ask Wait this minute, question. We're going already? So I don't want to ask you to pick a favorite. I okay. really don't. But um, Hollywood uh, this, or Orlando? Uh, that hand or that hand is the favorite? I don't know. They're like the same. This one's okay. got a wedding ring. Okay, why are we having our hands? <laughs> I don't know. I cities? talk a lot with my hands. Well, gosh, where's north and south? I, you know, it's hard to north tell. Is north is up. And south. Always up. Okay. So <laughs> between. Hollywood and, and Orlando. Yeah. The houses. I have, we have not been out to California to see okay. the Killer Clowns. We're not going to, sadly. Are you talking about the Killer Clowns houses yeah. specifically? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we love the ones here in Orlando. Yeah. But from what we've seen on YouTube, mm -hmm. I kind of like the ones out in California better. Don't get me wrong, I love Orlando's better. I mean, because we're here, it's our home. But from your perspective, you've seen both. Well, you know what? I, that's a very unfair, you put me, I'm very uncomfortable. Hot seat. I feel very uncomfortable right now. I'm sorry. I feel violated. No, I'm not, I'm I feel not. like this is so, something of a microaggression. Uh, I don't know how to respond to this. I feel really awkward, okay, <laughs> right you, now. No, I'll be very honest I with you. I do awkward. have, I, I have a, after seeing both of them, let me tell you something. Pros there, and cons. There is, there's no cons. <laughs> there's only pros. No, I'm serious. They're both they're obviously different. Right. Right? Um, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but they're very, very different. But one thing I can tell you that I, I spoke to the Kyoto brothers of it, I go, especially Charlie, because he's the, you know, he's the artist. He conceives things and, you know, uh, they, together they work as a collective. When they create things, it's like collectively they create something. And it, gets made and it's obviously we've seen their work but I said Charlie's you know I, you know I don't know as much color as about as you do but I would say they really nailed the colors he goes spot on they just got the, the I don't know how they did it but they got the colors absolutely perfect the um, the, the clown figures are a good interpretation of the original uh, I'm not sure if the Kyoto brothers uh, I'm not 100% sure if they still have the original molds but how cool would that have been right? to re the original molds from the movie? However, they're, they're interesting interpretations of the clowns. You know, let's face it, not every clown is going to look alike. So, right. it, so it's okay that they look different. Um, but uh, there's no cons whatsoever. I think the one in Orlando may be like a minute longer. I've heard that from people saying yeah. that the, that but the I, I don't know. I would have longer. To, I would have to like time it. But I'm, I'm, both experiences are fun. They're fun. The scares are really good in all of them. Right. They, uh, <clears throat> the way they block out the sound effects and music and sound, and the scare actors are real. Everyone gives a hundred percent at both of them. So I would say go to both. That's it. It's like you're asking, like, Dad. Yeah. Who do you like <laughs> better, me or my brother, or me, me or my sister? Yeah, I have two daughters. I don't think they've ever asked. They've never asked, who do you like more? Well, I don't like you more. I like, I love you both. You know, right. if it came, if it came down to a choice, who would you pick? I would kill myself. Uh, you know, I don't know what to don't tell you. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, my daughters have never said that though. I feel but, like, I feel like but that's why I feel like, or both of them are, both of them are near and dear to me because they're really good interpretations of the killer clown world. I, ha I have one con. I'm gonna I'm gonna step out on a limb and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a con. You ready for this? Okay. I'm so gonna you be that bad your, guy. Your, your all your your hate mail. We want him. your hate mail. There's one con. It's not really a con though. It's a suggestion. I'll say that. Okay. I feel like what they should have done is every, it would have been messy. But you know what? It's a theme park. It's messy. Everybody should have like some little little Dixie cup of popcorn to walk through the house with. That's a good idea. Are you allowed to go in with food? I don't know. Why Probably not. I, I would imagine you could. <laughs> but I think that would have been amazing. Or have a popcorn machine served by a clown at the front. Right. And for me, I would like maybe like hot dog and pizza at the hot other end. Hot dog and pizza. Well, why stop there? It's cotton candy yeah, and because, steak. Yeah, well, because you know, pizza is a big deal in the yeah. movie, obviously. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, I'm sorry. If you're looking for a con, <laughs> if you're looking for hate, you're not going to get it from me. No. It's just no. that Uncle John isn't going to hate, especially on his beloved killer clowns. No. And if you haven't seen Killer Clowns, which, why? Yeah, you need to go to see, see it. it. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome, man. For taking the time to talk oh, with man, us. Oh, man, it's been so wonderful. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it's
Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way 